three branches. We have ju the judicial branch, okay, judges, lawyers, courts. We have our parliament. Our parliament is called the Knesset. It comes from an ancient word. We have 120 members of parliament, Knesset members. And we have the government, of course. Usually the government, uh, you have to make a coalition between a few parties. The head of the government, the prime minister, is the head usually of the biggest party. I think it's more like here in Spain, I'm not sure, but it's like many countries. Just for the common knowledge, for the information, today Israel prime minister is Benjamin Netanyahu. He is elected for four years. After four years, new elections. We have a president which is only for delegations, for ceremonies. He represents Israel, but he doesn't really have a, like a, you know, really power. Today, his name is Shimon Peres. You might have heard of him because he's quite well known all over <laughs> the world. So this is a democratic country, very important to say. Equal rights, equal religious to all the religious, they can practice whatever they want, equal rights to minorities. What else? It's a modern country. Modern country, which means we have every aspect of modern country. We have modern cities. <clears throat> you probably heard about Tel Aviv. It's our New York, it's our Paris, it's our... That's our uh, city where we have beautiful beaches, hotels, that's where we party, that's where we have many museums. Very interesting, very culturized city. But not only that, we have also Jerusalem, of course, which is a combination of old history and really modern things today. So Israel is a modern country, and at this point I must say something important about Israel. How modern it is. Economically, it is considered by many a miracle. Why it is a miracle? It is a young country, only 62 years, I will get to that. Okay? It is a small country, as I told you, small by territory, small by number, 7 million now only. It is in hostile environment, but yet we have achieved so many uh, international reputation in a lot of areas. Our economy considered very strong. For example, just for common knowledge, our GDP per capita is $30,000. What does it mean? It means that every person contributes to the country by average $30,000. It's the amount of Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, so really developed country. Uh, our main, main industry is, techno is the technological industry. Why is that? We don't have resources. In Israel, we don't have oil. We don't have diamonds. We don't have gold. We don't have something that we can take from the ground. We don't have nothing we can sell to other people except knowledge. So Israel is a really creative country. And during the years, it has made itself an <coughs> international reputation in a lot of areas, mainly technological, but also medicine, agriculture, uh, many industries, and of course, also culture, and literature, and art, and, okay, of course, uh, every, every other okay, aspect of a modern country. You might know some things that were created and invented in Israel, especially, as I told you, in the technological aspect. For example, you know that the first chat program, like the messenger, okay, was invented in Israel. Okay? The disk on key, for example, this small gadget you put in your pocket and you put 32 gigabytes of music, films, whatever you want, was invented by an Israeli company. Uh, for example, the first processor for the mobile computer was invented in Israel. Intel, the great company, the huge American company, established its first developed branch 
outside of the US in Israel. So you can see it's a very developed country and you get the, I think by now, the basic of what is Israel, you can feel it, you can sense it at least a little bit. So we'll get to the next section, which is, this is by the way, close look on the Israel geography and we'll get to that of course in a few minutes. So you cannot begin to understand Israel if you don't know the history. And why is that? Because Israel is a new country, as I told you, 62 years. It was established in 1948. But where did it come from? Why do you suddenly need a new country for the Jewish people? So it's not suddenly, and that's the important thing to know. The Jewish people has a huge, mass, enormous history in the land of Israel. How huge? More than you can imagine. 4,000 years. It is one of the oldest culture known to, man to mankind. I must say a little thing about <coughs> the history. Okay, we'll not get into it. As I told you, it's very hard to squeeze 4,000 years into a few minutes, but I'll try to give you the important landmarks, the basics one. And you know what? You don't need, need, you don't need me for that. Why? I did not invent it. I just tell you that. If you want to really know it, you can go where? To the Bible. The Bible tells you the history of the Jewish people. It tells you a lot of things about religion, <coughs> but it's also a history book. It also has facts about where did the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, the Israelites call them, where did they come from? So I will give you a shortcut, okay, of this story from the Bible. As you know, the, well, our ancestor is Abraham. He was the father. He has a son, Isaac, and he had a son, Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. One of them is Dan, like my name. These 12 sons had to go to Egypt because there was hunger. In Egypt, they multiplied, okay? And after a few hundred years, unfortunately, became slaves. How do we know? The Bible tells us. When they were slaves, they also participated in building the huge pyramids. You can see it today. You can go to Egypt near Cairo and you can see the pyramids. It's one of the magnificent things to see. <clears throat> so the Hebrew people were slaves then. Who came to the re rescue? Moses. Moses was the leader who freed Israel, the Hebrew people, from being slaves. And you may know the story. He had to take them where? Here, to the land of Israel, because that's where they came from. So he had to cross the sea here. According to the tradition, the legend, he had to divide it into two and cross the desert. Nice story, right? And then he had to cross the desert for 40 years. That's a long time. In this time, on Mount Sinai, very important thing. We got the Torah. We got the Ten Commandments. You can read it in the Bible. <laughs> then in the land of here, Israel, there were 12 tribes. 12 tribes according to the 12 sons of Jacob. Now came kings, you probably, you probably heard about them. King David, he made Jerusalem, okay, here, sorry, here the capital of his kingdom. I'm talking about 3,000 years ago, look, look at the vast history. And you know, he had a son, King Solomon. King Solomon was really known, why he was first wise, second, he had, according to tradition, 1,000 women, very hard, huh? But for one more important thing, he built the first holy temple. The first holy temple which was the religious center <coughs> of the Hebrew people. <coughs> Excuse me. Then what happened? A lot of empires wanted this area. Why? It is a central area between Africa, Europe and Asia. It's a very important region to cross by to the different continents. So many, em so many empires came. Who came? For example, the Babylons came. 
They didn't like what they saw. Because